Here's a question for you. What does a pacemaker, dynamite, a zip, a three-point seat belt, and a smooth twist barrel have in common? Swedish innovation. Yes, I am in Sweden, and yes, I am going to be showing you around the FX factory today. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be showing you uh, some of the processes that the, the guns go through, uh, show you how they're put together, show you how they're made, speak to some of the people behind the design and behind the business. It should be a lot of fun, so let's get straight to it. An FX A gun begins its life as an idea, and that idea is then brought to life in a CAD program. Months, sometimes even years, are spent perfecting and tweaking the small details before production begins. Hello, my name is Johan Axelsson and I'm here to sign the new FX crown that we will unveil at the EVA show this year. Um, this is the FX crown. Uh, it is a multi-caliber bottle gun, fully shrouded. Um, it's available with a big magazine that we use on the impact. Um, you will be able to adjust the power and speed with both air control and hamstring control. And it'll be a great rifle. We use of 3D printer quite a lot in designing new stuff. We test all the mechanical features of the parts before we start seeing, seeing them, saving us a lot of time. This is the new magazine for the FX Crown. With the 3D printer we're able to test fitment and everything else before the production even starts. Once prototypes have been tested and the design has been finalized, production begins. And this is where the digital drawings are given life, in the machining room. The state-of-the-art machinery that you see over here is responsible for manufacturing extremely complicated parts. It wouldn't be possible to build an air gun like the Impact without the best CNC machines. And so FX have really invested a lot of money into their equipment. These machines probably cost tens of millions of dollars and so it's also very important that there are experienced machinists operating them. I was extremely impressed with the professionalism of the workers and just how clean and organized everything looked. Now I just happened to be here on the same day that a brand new monster CNC machine arrived. These beasts are responsible for manufacturing some of the really complex parts like the breech blocks and the main body assembly of the impact. The addition of a second machine will mean that FX are able to take a step closer to meeting the incredibly high demand for the impact. Once parts have been manufactured, their tolerances are inspected, and then it's on to the next stage. Before parts can be assembled, they need to be anodized, coated, and engraved with branding and serial numbers. This laser engraving machine can do many breech blocks at once. The barrel making process is top secret, so I can't show you that, but here's a whole lot of smooth twist barrels being tested for straightness before they are fitted to the rifles. The assembly process requires a lot of hands, so this huge room is where you'll find most of the time consuming work being done. Each worker is assigned a particular job, and so as you can imagine, after working here for a while, they become really good at what they do. Orders for different rifles and parts can change drastically all the time, so every day here can look quite different. One day you'll see somebody working on regulators, and the next day it's magazines. It all depends on supply and demand. As many of you all know, for the past year or two the impact has been in incredibly high demand. So there are entire teams working on the impacts at any given time. It's really interesting to watch. I also found it quite interesting to compare the working conditions in the FX factory to some of the other factories I've visited. In many places you'll find workers in oily overalls sitting at a grey desk and not looking too excited about the task at hand. These guys are given the freedom to wear what they want and they're able to work in a room that's very clean and colourful. And of course, you need to stay well fueled when working a job like this, so FX makes sure that coffee and snacks are always readily available. Today is a very special day because some of the first few prototype crowns are being assembled and fitted to some beautiful Manelli stocks. 
Here's the owner of the company, Frederick Axelson, getting involved as usual and putting together a crown. At lunchtime, the factory workers all head towards the kitchen where some delicious food has been laid out for them. The Nordic Ski Championships are on at the moment, and so everyone is really keen to see their favorite Swedish athletes compete. Just another day at the office. After lunch, I decide to make my way down to the shooting range where the newly assembled rifles begin their tuning, testing, and quality control. These impacts are being set to the optimum power for accuracy with JSP pellets and test fired over the chronograph to check for consistency. Paper targets are set up at 40 meters and groups are shot through each barrel to ensure that they meet the accuracy standard. And very importantly, the human error variable is removed completely by clamping the rifle securely in a vase. And this really helps because if there are any accuracy issues, it's clear that it's the rifle and not the shooter. I'm standing in one of the storage rooms where I found a box um, that says a lot about the pride that this company puts into their work. Uh, there's a box down here in which all the bits and pieces of the rifles that have any slight defects are discarded. Um, I found two beautiful Manelli stocks, uh, Wildcat stocks, um, just piled into a box. And if you look closely here, you can see some tape. I'll try to get this to focus here. If you remove this tape, what you find is a very, very slight dent. You can see the dent right over there. And even though that's a very, very slight dent, it's enough for them to say, okay, this isn't good enough for our standard. We can't send this out to the consumers. Um, and on that note, um, I do want to mention a few things that might help you if you purchase an FX rifle, um, just to get the best accuracy out of your gun. A lot of people will, will buy an FX rifle and try and shoot a group with it immediately and notice that uh, the group isn't as tight as what they expect. So they have what they think is a quality control issue. Um, and I can tell you from being in the factory for a few days now um, that they test every single barrel to make sure that the velocity is where it needs to be, that the gun is shooting consistently and that the groups are to a very, very tight standard. I'm talking about an indoor 40 meter range and they expect nothing less than a uh, half inch group at, at 40 meters. Um, or, you know, it's pretty much a clover leaf, a clover leaf hole in a piece of paper down a range. That's a very, very high standard. Um, so when you get your gun, it is going to be quality controlled. But what they do is if you look at the end of your, your smooth twist barrel um, or your smooth twist X barrel, once you've bought it, what you're going to see is, is a, a darkish paste inside the barrel. And what happens is they put a, a soft cloth inside that's coated in a, um, a, a ball cleaning paste and they, they spin it around in there to polish up the inside of the barrel. That helps to remove any um, burring or any uh, roughness in the barrel. It's going to help your accuracy long term, but you need to get that stuff out of your barrel before you start shooting. So, for example, when I got my Wildcat initially, when I bought my Wildcat, um, I shot a group and it wasn't that great. Um, and, and I actually discovered that I needed to clean out that barrel a lot. I just put about 10 cleaning pellets through it and the accuracy tightened right up. Um, so that's one thing that's important to note. Another thing that's important to note is that um, you, you have to shoot the gun at, at a specific power to get the best accuracy out of your gun. So for example, shooting JSB 18 and 16 grain pellets, there's kind of a, a magic regulator pressure that, that the guns come uh, with from the factory for those pellets and at that regulator pressure um, the airflow through that barrel is spread out right but if you turn the pressure up to 150 bar then what you're going to find is the, the valve closes because of the extra pressure the valve closes before the pellet gets to the end of the barrel so that last little section in the barrel there's no puff of air behind it and you're going to lose accuracy so all I'm trying to say now is that um, you need to uh, do all the basics right when you get your gun to make sure that you, you optimize the accuracy out of your gun. Don't just blame it on quality control. You've got to do your bit as well. Um, yeah, the quality control I'm really, really impressed with here. And finally, after everything has been tested, it's time for them to be packaged and sent off to the new homes all over the world. It really is quite something to see the sheer number of guns that are produced here every day. 
it makes me really happy to be honest because what it tells me is that our sport is growing bigger every single day and more people are being exposed to precision air gun products. Once you pick up a quality PCP, there is no going back. Well, it's been a really fantastic day. I know I've had so much fun just walking around and seeing how these guns are made firsthand. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, I do want to thank FX Air Guns for, for having me over. Um, it's a real privilege to be here. And yeah, I hope to see you guys next time.